This is a quick look at the Genie Smart Dots, which are the newer version of the Genie Smart Spots. Okay, regardless of what you call them, these are just smart outlets, so they connect to Wi-Fi, making them controllable using a smartphone or other device like Alexa. Let's have a look at the packaging, features, see what's included, and I'll share my pros and cons along the way. Wi-Fi controls devices, share access, set schedules, hmm, all right. Simple setup, voice activation. Oh, I can start the coffee maker. I, well, I guess if you have an older coffee maker that doesn't already have a built-in timer. No. 2.4 gigahertz networks only, mobile devices running iOS 9 or higher, Android 5.0 or higher, Prop 65 warning, power ratings, interior use only. Let's open it up. What's in here? Air. <laughs> and lots of space. Perhaps not environmentally friendly packaging. I'll recycle the plastic and cardboard later. And we have our dots. We have a start guide, voice control guide. All right. Let's check out a dot. We have a three pronged outlet three-prong plug, ETL listed, which is important for safety, and power button. Now to plug it in. Before I literally connect the dots, I'd like to demonstrate what simple setup, which is how Genie's marketing department has described this process on the packaging, looks like. There were a few hiccups during my installation, which I'd like to share with you, so quote-unquote simple, in my case, didn't mean quick. I'll try to keep this as brief as possible so you don't fall asleep. Here goes. I opened the App Store, searched Genie, once I found the app, I downloaded it, opened it, allowed notifications, agreed with a privacy policy that I should have read, and created a new account by registering with my email. I could also have registered by using a Google ID. There's two-step verification, so I jumped into email, grabbed the code, jumped back to the app, typed in the code, created a password, and was done after allowing Bluetooth access. Phew. The first hiccup that I encountered was that the instructions say to plug in a dot, at which point the indicator should flash. Um, there was no flashing. So I reset the dot by pressing and holding the power button for three seconds. Then I got the flashing light. Yay! In the app, I pressed add new device, selected smart power. Yes, it's flashing quickly. Chose my Wi-Fi network, input the Wi-Fi password, and waited for a connection. Sure. It would have downloaded faster had I been closer to the router, but I was pretty far away. Done. Now that it's connected, I can use the oversized power button in the app to turn this lamp on and off. Cool. Also, once programmed, the dots can be moved around the house without issue as long as there's a decent Wi-Fi signal. Below the power button are the helpful schedule and timer features. I'll select schedule, add, and this is a nice feature, but it can be tricky. Just know that power on times and power off times are set separately. So for example, here I'll set an on time of 12, 11 a.m., Monday through Saturday, Save that, hit add, and now I'll set an off time of 12, 12 a.m. Now I won't select the day of the week, I'll save that, and you'll notice that the off time program will only run once. Yeah, so you need to pay attention. You may also notice here that the scheduled programs appear in 24 hour format. I don't know why, but that could be confusing. Going back and selecting timer, now, the timer function is interesting, but unfortunately, it's only a countdown timer to providing power. It would be nice if there was an option to select a countdown to turning power off, which, for example, you'd use if you wanted to leave the lights on for 10 minutes after you've left the house. No big deal, though. Keep in mind that if the schedule and timer settings overlap, you may not get the results you expect. Going back... The three dots in the upper right corner are used to access settings for each individual dot. Here I can rename the device, set device location, set up device sharing with others in the household, group devices together to run on the same schedules, among other things. 
Now each dot has its own power button, which is helpful for me when I don't have my phone handy. And you simply turn power on and off by pressing the power button on the dot. A few things worth noting before I show you the hiccup I encountered connecting the second dot. First, two dots won't fit into a single outlet. There's enough room to get a regular plug in and squeeze in an iPhone cube, but it's a little tight. Secondly, nowhere does it say anything about using a dot to control a power strip or connecting extension cords. However, the instructions do say not to exceed the rated capacity. So let's go to the board. Voltage is listed as 125 volts at the usual 60 hertz frequency. And since max load current is 10 amps, we know max power is 1,250 watts. Remember the electrical conversion triad? Huh? Watts equals volts times amps. Anyway, that would mean I would be fine plugging in, say, a 10,000 BTU Energy Star air conditioner that's rated 115 volts, 7.7 .7 amps, that's 885 and a half watts, but it's not a good choice for my six horsepower shop vac given it's rated 120 volts, 10 amps. That's just too close, in my opinion. So check the ratings of whatever you're plugging in to be safe. I'd love to show you the voice command feature, but unfortunately we don't have Alexa, Google Assistant, or Microsoft, what is it, Cortana? Cortana? I don't know. In our household, we have something better than all of those. It's called Dad. Dad, give me one. I'll be right back. Please. So I just want to talk about the app really quickly. It's pretty good, but it would be even better if there were other Genie devices in our home. Since we're not invested in this platform, for example, with cameras, bulbs, power strips, outlets, and other products Genie offers, this setup is one more app and another company that now has my contact information. Please don't spam me. I'd like to eventually see these dots integrated into another app, say, for example, the Apple Home app. Before I wrap up, I'm going to show you the hiccup I encountered connecting the second dot. It was a bit frustrating. I plugged it in. Again, no flashing. So I pressed and held the power button for three seconds. Then I went into the app, selected add new device, smart power. Yes, it's flashing quickly. Chose a Wi-Fi network and waited for the connection. Oops. So I tried again. I reset the dot by holding power for three seconds, which put me into easy mode. And then I held the button for another three seconds, which put me into AP mode. No idea what AP stands for. It doesn't say in the manual. <laughs> All it says is the light blinks slower. Yes, slowly. Now, luckily in AP mode, Confirm. the app was intuitive enough to suggest pairing to the network using my phone's hotspot. So I went into my phone's Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth has to be on, and selected the dot under networks. Then I went back to the app, connect now, and voila. So simple, but not that simple or quick. To wrap up, overall, this is a convenient product that allows control over whichever devices I choose. And the dots are cheaper than upgrading the entire home with Wi-Fi smart switches and outlets. I've installed one on the TV, which means no more morning cartoons before school. Sorry, honey. And one in the creepy part of the basement where no one wants to go. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.